Acts 2, 1 through 4. Now, um, this is right after the, um, the, it's during the time of Pentecost, the, the Jewish feast that they did, and this is after Jesus went back up to heaven and left the disciples waiting on the Holy Spirit. And there was, um, I believe it was ten days between Christ leaving and the Holy Spirit coming. While the day of Pentecost was running its course, they were all together in one place, when suddenly there came from the sky a noise like that of a strong driving wind, which filled the house where they were sitting. Now you got to think, you're hearing this noise, and everybody's sitting around just waiting, and they may be growing impatient, and then they hear this noise. They instantly know something's up. When we first come to God and receive the Holy Spirit, there should be something about us that people know, hey, something's up with Him. He ain't the same as He once was. Now, this will grow as we grow in the Spirit, but there should be something suddenly, a sudden change. Most people admit that when they were first came to faith, they had a fire stronger than any other time. If they had the fire they had when they first came to faith with the knowledge they had from years of experience, they'd be pointing people to the Lord like crazy. But oftentimes we let the world creep in and things where that fire dims down. But there's nothing like a new believer. Their passion and desire when they first come to Jesus. So there should be a difference. No, two. And there, and there appeared to them tongues like flames of fire, dispersed among them. Now, this is symbolic. You go back to Exodus, you see a pillar of fire representing God. This just represented God, a visible form of God. You again go back to Exodus, you see God represented by a burning bush. Oftentimes God is represented by fire. In the dream Abraham had, it was a fire that went through the the animal's carcasses. So oftentimes, because people can't see actually the glory of God, um, God told uh, Moses that if he looked upon him, he wouldn't be able to stand it because of his sin wouldn't have tolerated him to see God. That's why we can't see God in the flesh. We have to be in spirit form to see him after our death. But so this just symbolizes God here. And they were filled all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in tongues as the Spirit gave them power of utterance. Now this right here is something that's often controversial. It's very controversial, them speaking in tongues. You've got people that say, well, they were just, they say that to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to speak in tongues because it's a sign of it. Nowhere is that found in the Bible. The reason they spoke in tongues here is because it's Pentecost. And you've got every Jew from no matter where they were, and due to the Roman Empire, Jews went as the Roman Empire went. Most of the Roman citizens were some watered down form of Jew at this time. So they would have came in for Pentecost. So you got Jews in here in Jerusalem that necessarily don't speak um uh, don't speak Hebrew. So for them to understand you'd have to comprehend in another language. And if you look at it, they ain't speaking just one language when they talk, because this person that's a Greek understands them. This person from over here understands. It's multiple language coming out at the same time as they speak. Because this guy understands them and this guy understands them. They clearly can't be speaking both languages at once. But that's what they're hearing because of the power of the Holy Spirit using them. Now this can still be done today. Uh, there's... Um, Missionaries that go into desert places and if the Spirit comes upon them, that's the only way that they can speak to them if they don't got a translator. It's for them to be able to be understood. Nowhere in Scripture does it talk about us just babbling. 
when we received the Holy Spirit. If you look at it, the Holy Spirit's organized. In the whole book of Corinthians is about getting church order together, not doing all types of chaos. Because of that, God ain't going to have us do things that are just chaotic and just randomly do something. The reason this was done and the reason why the Spirit would still do this today is communication when we can't communicate with each other. And it's never done for a believer to a believer in Scripture. It's always done for a believer to witness to a lost person. Because the believer, God, God got them. God could use them to do it. It's just never done that in Scripture for a believer to communicate with another believer. This is one. It's also up for debate, debate whether this is still a gift of the Spirit. I, I think it is. I don't think God just cut off some of the gifts, but it's a gift of necessity. If this ain't needed to be done, it ain't going to be done. If everybody in here, everybody in here speaks the same language, so using the gift of tongues right now wouldn't make no sense. That doesn't say it don't exist. It says there's just no purpose at this point because we can communicate each other fine. So if this would have been a different time, I don't think if it would have just been a normal day. I don't think it would have been this reaction if all the normal, if only the city was full of the normal Jewish people. I don't think they would have spoken tongues. I don't think they would have needed to. They would have just been able to communicate with each other like they would every other day. You got certain churches out there that say you have to do this. Nowhere in scriptures that said that you have to do this. The gift of the, the Holy Spirit manifests himself in believers. That's true. But he manifests through our life. The fruit of the Spirit are in not what he manifests first what comes on what's on the inside. And then what's on the inside he brings out. He gives us joy, hope and love. And all of us ain't called to go to random places of the world to preach to people. And because of that, all of us don't need to speak in languages we don't know. Anywhere God brings us, He's going to prepare us to be able to do what we need to. The Spirit's going to allow us to do what we need to. These men to win this whole crowd to Christ, had to be able to speak in the language that these men spoke. So the Spirit empowered him to do it. I, if you look further, I don't even think they were realizing they were doing it until the people responded to them. They were just going out praising God. And the people happened to hear it, and they realized that. Sometimes God's going to use us and and we ain't even going to realize how effective He's using us until it's later brought to us. We can do something simple and it just somebody notice it. And we don't necessarily know, have to know that they notice it, but they know. Oftentimes I think there's no possible way that the Church met every single person that they won in this Pentecost. Some of, because some of them after Pentecost would have had to go their own way. They wouldn't have been able to stay. I say they met most of them, but they might have been one or two that slipped by that received the Holy Spirit. And later we find a group that uh, Paul actually goes to who has some knowledge of Christ. It could have been these people. The church ain't going to be able to reach every single person ourselves. One group ain't. Some things we're going to be used involuntarily to reach people and then somebody else is going to come along. We're to do our work that God's called us to do and not worry about the things that we 
aren't called to do. Too many times they focus on, well, you got to do this. Certain groups, you got to be able to do this. If you're more focused on that, you're going to miss what Christ has actually called you to do. Some people he's called to teach. Some people he's just called to be prayer warriors. No one job's more important than the other, but if you focus on what you're not called to do, you're going to miss out on the opportunities of what you are called to do. If the apostles would have been focused on the fact that they were speaking different languages, they would have been missing the message that God put on their hearts to preach at that time. They just... They were going. They were being willing. And God was using them. 